Sorry, can you, can you hear me? Sorry, I was on mute. Is that better now? How's that? Is that, is that okay? <laughs> yep, this is our life now. But at least as everyone's video calling, people spend less time doing this and this. So I was wondering, could this actually help slow climate change? Can we do more than just remote meetings? And what does the video call of the future look like? We're in space. Let's check it out. Point. It's always good to point in food. <laughs> Talking face to face while being in completely different places. Hello. This idea has actually been floating around for quite a while. And I'm not just talking about sci-fi films and pop culture from the last century. Hello? Mom, it's a picture phone. I'm talking about the 1800s. The first commercial video telephone came around way sooner than I would have expected. The picture phone was supposed to revolutionize business meetings, but adjusted for inflation, it cost up to around 1,000 US dollars per month. And for that, you only got 30 minutes of call time. Video calling was super expensive back then. The gadgets were pretty clunky and no one really had one anyway. So who did you even want to call? Enter the internet. It turned video calling into a mass market. Bandwidths kept increasing and companies like Sky brought the technology to millions of people. And then, well, the coronavirus pandemic. The global coronavirus pandemic. The coronavirus crisis. People all over the world are working from home. The corona pandemic was a watershed moment for video calling. I can't even begin to think how much time I've spent in this box since the pandemic started, along with lots and lots of other people. Download figures for video calling apps went through the roof. Zooms jumped from around 30 million in 2019 to almost 500 million in 2020. And its competitors also saw their numbers surge. And while video calling really started taking off, airlines didn't anymore. And it's left the industry really, really fragile and really, really struggling at the moment. This is Richard Maslin. He's an analyst for Kappa, an aviation research firm. I don't think any airline executive, anyone at all in the aviation sector really realised how big an impact coronavirus would actually have on the industry over the last year. The airline industry had grown tremendously in pre-pandemic years. And then it crashed, pardon the pun. It's very unlikely things will just go back to normal, especially if business travellers won't start flying again. They're the ones who usually drive revenues by buying last-minute tickets and paying for premium seats. The pandemic showed us we can meet colleagues and business partners anywhere without actually leaving our homes. And sure, that's bad news for airlines, but it's good news for the climate. Video communication or telepresence, whatever you want to call it, um, has an enormous potential role in reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions. This is Paul Dickinson. He's the founder of the Carbon Disclosure Project, a climate nonprofit. And he's been pretty passionate about video conferencing for 24 years. I was studying information technology and I suddenly realized that video could reduce potentially human transport for commuting to offices or maybe having consultations or business meetings. And uh, I made a list of all the occupations in the world. And I, I reckon about half of them could be done by video. When you remove half of human journeys, you remove half of the emissions from essentially passenger, road and rail transport, and of course, uh, air transport. Passenger travel makes up around 13% of all human emissions. So according to Paul's estimate, by replacing travel with video, we could slice this figure in half. But then of course, video calling also uses energy and creating that energy creates emissions. Yes, there are growing emissions from information technology and we need to pay attention to those. But they are absolutely tiny in comparison to the enormous emissions from transport. 
if I was to have a physical meeting with you now, uh, you're in Germany, I'm in the UK, uh, then again, uh, the physical emissions from us meeting would be much, much, much more than 99% uh, higher than, than the video meetings. Paul and I talked for about 45 minutes. I get my internet via copper cable, which according to a recent study means that data processing and transmission created about 3 grams of CO2. On a return flight from Berlin to London, I would have cost 187 kilograms, so 187,000 grams of emissions. But what will happen after the pandemic? Will we just start driving to work and flying again like before? Or will we actually keep meeting online? So I think moving forward, we will see some substitution. So maybe people have less business trips, but they will be better business trips doing a lot more, but they will be a lot less in number. It feels to me like a turning of the tide. I think we've reached peak transport. I think we're the last generation to do this ridiculous amount of transport, particularly commuting. There doesn't seem to be any reason for us to do all this travel. But you know, I'm just tired of talking to people through a screen all day. It's just not the same as meeting in real life. In fact, video calls are really quite exhausting for us. Our brains miss the cues they get from body language. They feel overwhelmed by all the faces staring at us and can't really deal with lags in sound and video. But people are already working on improving online meetings. So I'm about to meet the founder of Meet in VR, but not in boring two-dimensional video call, but in virtual reality. Let's see how that goes. That is my virtual me, an avatar the company created from a photo. Hey Malte, good to see you here. Welcome to Meeting VR. So uh, this is our interview room. Uh, we have coffee. We have coffee which is warm all the time. So in VR you basically have, you know, you don't have the limitations of reality. So we are looking at every single interaction which you have normally in meetings and trying to make them even more intuitive and more e efficient and effective than in real life. And we can do this uh, because in VR you can actually have superpowers. For example, there's always a pen behind your ear. But you haven't been in the real world and just tried to get a pen from behind your ear or something like that. I did. <laughs> Multiple times, actually, yes. And that's so weird when it happens. Like, I want to make a quick sketch and then, oh, wait, I'm not emitting VR, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, that's when I feel like maybe I should spend more time in the real world as well. Chris predicts our lives will move into virtual reality more and more in the next few years. Some corporations from the US are already using Meet in VR to let their employees collaborate to mind map or brainstorm. Uh, but there's also companies who want to use Meet in VR uh, to present their products better to their customers and offer them a more memorable and more engaging experience. Basically, every time uh, you know somebody tries an experience like this, it's uh, the, the emotional connection uh, which, you're, which you're building with the other participants and uh, with the experience itself is much stronger than anything you would be able to achieve through a video call. And I must say, that's true, at least for me. I mean, I'm aware the whole time that this is just an illusion, but I weirdly feel like I'm bonding with Chris. Yeah, By the way, this is what he looks like in real life. In the future, we will actually be able to have the, our facial expressions uh, in VR brought as well. Uh, and we will, in a way, be represented like holograms um, of ourselves. So you will be able to have an exact replica of yourself in virtual reality, just like you do in a video call. And in addition to that, have all the body language and the feeling of presence. Uh, so that's extremely exciting uh, to look into. More meetings, more Thanks, Malta, and uh, good luck, and uh, hopefully see you again. Wow. So crazy to just wake up. I mean, just a few seconds ago, I was in this massive auditorium, and yeah, now I'm here. <laughs> the science fiction of just a few decades ago is quickly becoming reality. Holograms that can transmit a live copy of you are already a thing. Then there are telepresence robots. Okay, some might say they're just tablets on wheels, but they allow people to actually move around and take up physical space somewhere else. And yes, even surgeries are already being done remotely. And for this especially, you really want to make sure your internet connection is stable.
We need to build the foundation. We need to get fiber optic cable into every home in, in the world as quickly as possible. Because building ever more roads and ever more cars and ever more airports is not a sustainable solution uh, to increasing our communications. We must um, uh, transport our, our hearts, our souls, our presence, and not ourselves. So what are your thoughts on online meetings? Let us know in the comments and hit subscribe for more videos like this every Friday.